Save Our Seminary at Forest Glen, Seminary Stories, Buildings, Landscape, and Sculpture. Today's story is about finding the gazebo in the grove and comes to you from the Save Our Seminary Glen Restoration Committee. The voice you're hearing is Gene Rich, but the research was done by all the members of the committee shown here. A story begins when the committee was examining uh, these panoramic photographs of the eastern uh, edge of the National Park Seminary campus from the 1920s, photographs uh, taken from the Castle Bridge. And here we see a feature that I'd never heard of before, a wooden gazebo. With this information, we began to study more closely various other photographs from the school years. And one of our volunteers found this uh, photograph in a student photo album uh, from the 1913 to 1915 uh, time frame. And here you see a close-up of a wooden gazebo. You can see the colonial house in the background. You can see that the entrance to the gazebo seemed to be on the uh, uphill eastern um, edge of the gazebo structure. You can see there was a railing on the downhill side suggesting that the gazebo uh, represented a, an overlook site where students could come and enjoy uh, the scenes of the stream um, and uh, the campus of the National Park Seminary. This photograph also let us estimate how um, big the gazebo was, um, knowing that a um, 15-year-old uh, student in 1912 would have been a little under 5'2". That suggests to us that the gazebo was probably um, between 12 and 15 feet high and also 12 and 15 feet wide. To better locate the gazebo, uh, we studied uh, more old photographs as well as old and modern maps. Here we can see uh, the gazebo um, and the most prominent feature of the eastern edge of the campus, the statue Silva. Silva was the most prominent feature of um, the area known by, uh, as the Grove, which was a well-tended woodland on the eastern edge of the National Park Seminary campus. Looking at the um, National Park Seminary catalog map from the height of the school's development, which was around 1927, uh, we can see the Colonial House, the Pergola Bridge, the Castle Bridge, where we'd seen those other panoramic photographs taken. And there's the castle and the villa, the Villa Road. But you don't see um, any gazebo. You, indeed, you don't even see Silva on this map. So we found uh, more recent topographic maps. Here's one that actually shows um, the National Park Seminary Homeowners Association property line. There we've got the Colonial House. There we've got the castle. There we've got remnants of the Pergola Bridge. Here we've got Silva. And uh, Looking at this topographic map, we wondered, well, where could the gazebo have been? There are several uh, sort of open, flatter areas that might have held a structure of that size. So with these candidate locations in mind, we started studying the old photographs more carefully. Um, here we see uh, Silva. We see that Silva is uh, near or at the top of the hill that uh, uh, the grove occupied. So there's no sign of a hillside behind Silva. And the gazebo seems to be somewhat uh, downhill as well as to the south of Silva. You can see a little bit of hillside behind the gazebo. And of course, the hillside falls off below the gazebo, consistent with the idea that the gazebo was an overlook. Also, you can see that, there, uh, that the hill seems to continue to slope down uh, south of the gazebo. 
Also, we uh, found a photograph that showed that uh, you could actually see the gazebo from in front of the Colonial House. So we thought maybe we could use that information as well to help us locate the gazebo. So here, taking another look at that topographic map, we can see uh, here's the statue Silva, somewhat uh, downhill and south from Silva is this flat area. That was one of our candidates. Uh, there would be some hillside behind the gazebo here. You can see that the hill continues to fall off south of the gazebo. The hill falls off steeply below the gazebo, consistent with the idea that the gazebo could have been an overlook in this location. So maybe the gazebo was here. And then with this potential line of sight, perhaps we could use this photograph uh, to help us uh, locate the So in March of 2020, with uh, most of the leaves off the vines and trees, uh, my wife Elaine held a bright flashlight at our suspected location for the gazebo. We picked a couple of different locations, but the only one where I could get a good image uh, was the location where she's standing here. And as you can see, it looks like uh, she's uh, this location is a little too low for her to be uh, standing uh, near the floor of the gazebo. So um, this location where I was able to get an image is too low. Uh, this other location uh, um, is the one that we now suspect uh, represents uh, the location for the gazebo. As I said, unfortunately couldn't get a, a clear photograph of her um, flashlight um, image um, when she was in this location. With that information, we've been able to um, Imagine where the uh, gazebo was located. Here we are walking from uh, Silva toward the location of the gazebo. And here uh, we have um, marked out uh, a 14 foot square uh, uh, potential uh, platform for the gazebo where we uh, believe it was located. And here I've superimposed uh, that uh, image from the student scrapbook of the gazebo so that you can imagine what um, this area might look like in the future if there could be a gazebo providing an overlook of the National Park Cemetery campus. Thanks for your attention. We hope you have enjoyed this seminary story. Thanks for watching. Please visit us at saveourseminary.org to find out about our tour and event schedules and how you can help continue to save our seminary. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram.